Hello everyone, we are live. <laughs> We're live for the What's Next interactive workshop, how to overcome struggles in your acrylic portrait. Hey, happy to help. Hope you're having a fantastic Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. And hey, I've got a painting behind me here. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun painting on top of this portrait. But I'm just going to wait for a few people to join in. I think I'm actually a couple minutes ahead of 10 o'clock. So <clears throat> we got Diana. Good to see you, Diana. <clears throat> just have to make sure my, my voice gets warmed up. I really haven't spoken too much this morning. But anyway, good to see you, Diana. And you might recognize that painting behind you there. Hi, Diana. Good to see you. From the UK. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, so over in the UK, uh, it would be, what, about 4 o'clock? 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We got Susie online. Nice to see you, Susie. Yeah, I think it would be about 4 o'clock uh, UK time. We have a lot of people from UK. So this is, this is great. This is great. We're just going to wait for a few people to pop in here. Hey, why don't you guys introduce yourself? Just let me know. It encourages me to know people are watching, and then I can connect with you later here as well. John is here. Good to see you, John. Diane, good to see you. Diana says, yes, I recognize the picture. Yes, it's 4 p.m. Fantastic. Susie's here. Joyce is here. Excellent. Awesome. Okay. So this is just going to be kind of impromptu. I'm just holding this camera here, so I'm sorry for a little bit of the shaking. This is just done with my iPhone. This is really the best way. It's the best way to uh, uh, do something like this. Godfrey's here. Good to see you, Godfrey. Sherry is here. Rebecca's here. Good to see you, Rebecca. Karen is here. Good to see you, Karen. 4 p.m. in the U.K. Awesome. Asta is here. Always good to see you, Asta. Shonda, good to see you. Susan, good to see you as well. All right. <laughs> well, this is going to be a lot of fun, and I look forward just to taking, I don't know, half an hour, hour, two hours. It all depends on you guys, your, your questions, and just to uh, help you overcome struggles in your acrylic portrait. So I'm excited. We have Omer, Judy, Wendy, Janie. Excellent. Suzanne, good to see you, Suzanne. Asta says it's 8.30 p.m. in India. Pam is here. Good to see you, Pam. Tana is here, or Tana, is, how do you pronounce your name, Tana? Uh, Gail is here. She says, looking forward to this help. I'm looking forward to helping you. <laughs> Lisa is here. Good to see you, Lisa. Wendy is here. Wendy, awesome to see you. Diane is here. Diane says she has to go in a little bit, but hey, there will be a recording. It'll stay up here in the Facebook group for a while, so no worries. Katya is here. Good to see you, Katya. Okay, well, I want to get going in just a couple of minutes. I'm waiting for some people to filter in, and we'll get started in just a couple minutes. Okay, Kevin's here. Good to see you, Kev, as always. Nigel, Claire, Monica, good to see you. Sonali, good to see you. Yeah, just uh, let us know where you're watching from. It's always cool to see just the fact with technology that we can do this all over the world. I mean, we got people in the UK. We got people in America. We have people in Canada. We have people in India. And probably would have a few people in Australia, but I think it's one in the morning over there. You'd have to be pretty dedicated or a night owl to watch us at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Lisa, D, Donna, good to see you. Kathy, good to see you. Kay, good to see you. All right. Diane's from Ireland. Awesome. Awesome. Pam is from Oregon. Awesome. All right, Betty is here. Good to see you, Betty. 
And we'll get started at about 10.05, okay? At about 10.05, so just a couple minutes here. Mary is from The Rock. I love it. <laughs> Over on the east side of Canada. Donna, Donna from Alberta. Donna is from Alberta, and we love Donna. Donna's wonderful in this group, helping out as an admin. We love it. Uh, Judy, Della. Della's here. Della's the other admin in the group. We love her help as well. We really appreciate, <clears throat> excuse me, really appreciate both of them. I got to get a drink of water here because when you have braces, it makes it a little harder. There we go. You might be, you might be seeing me take a sip of water once in a while. And I have my wood stove fired up because it was a little chilly here in Wisconsin. So I was doing a little painting. It wasn't drying fast enough, which is kind of weird, but Sometimes you do want it to dry faster. Now it's like it's like 75 degrees in this place, almost probably going on 80 degrees. It's a little hot. <laughs> anyway, Della, Tony, Judy, good to see you. Diane, good to see you. Marag, Vanessa. And Katya is joining us from Australia. So Katya, you are either very dedicated or you're a night owl or both. That's awesome. Thanks for joining. Okay, Nancy, Tana, Debbie, good to see you all. All right. <laughs> Kim is here, Della's here. So we're going to get started here in just a minute. Shannon, Maggie, got almost, uh, let's see, 90 people, close to 90 people here. That's fantastic. Peter from the UK, good to see you, Peter. All right. All right, well, guys, it says... It says 10.05 on my watch, so I'm going to get started here, okay? I might be a couple minutes off. Sometimes I put my watch ahead just so I don't miss appointments. <laughs> Michael's here. Good to see you, Michael. Sheetal, good to see you. All right, you guys can just continue to join, but we're going to get started here. I want to be respectful of your time, okay? Oh, Connie. Connie's from Matt. Tommy's created to thrive. I got to mention that. Guys, if you're not a member of Created to Thrive, uh, you should. You should join that. Matt Tommy's a real deal. He's an awesome artist, and he encourages people to promote their artwork online. He shows you how to market your work online and in person uh, from a Christian perspective, but he's really, really good at art marketing. That's his forte. Just, just a little plug for Matt Tommy. So it's just good to see Connie from, from that group. I'm a part of Matt Tommy's um, membership group. Okay, let's get started here, guys. Let's get started. I'm going to open up with a word of prayer, and we're going to dive right in, okay? So, Father, thank you. Thank you so much for all the uh, students here, all the people uh, just gathered here today to learn techniques, how to make our portraits better, Lord. And I'm just excited to be able to teach them. And, Lord, you've given me the privilege and opportunity to do that. So, Lord, help me to teach them well. And, Father, Bless each and every artist here, each and every artist that might be going through struggles in their painting. Maybe not. Maybe some of them are just wanting to get a little better. Others might be really frustrated and just really some of them might even be ready to give up on the, the portrait we're working on here for the challenge. And some are facing many different difficulties and challenges in their lives outside of their artwork. But Lord, I pray you bless them. I pray you provide for them. I pray you'd show up and just... Let them experience you, uh, draw them close to you, provide everything they need, paints and brushes and creativity, time to paint, inspiration to paint, Lord. Yes, Lord, really provide inspiration, I pray, for many of the artists here and some that aren't here and just uh, have been struggling with different things with COVID and they just haven't had the uh, willpower or desire to, to pick up a brush. But deep down inside, they do have that desire. I pray you'd help them to find that and work out of it. So Lord, bless this class. I pray that the artists would come away with real tips, real techniques on how to make their portrait better. They'd be encouraged. Bless each and every one in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, we have almost 100 people here, so this is fantastic. Fantastic. Let's switch the camera here. I'm just switching on my iPhone. This is the painting we're working on, okay? We're actually going to be working on two paintings. This is Diana Hancock's painting. 
And just to give you a little background on this before we dive in, um, you know, on was it Saturday, I think, or Friday night, I was seeing in our Facebook group um, some of the struggles artists were having in their portraits. So many, many people, well, a good handful of people were posting honestly, authentically, how they are struggling with their portraits. You know, the blending isn't coming out, it's getting too dark in certain areas. Um, and I could sense that frustration, I could sense that discouragement, you know, and we're artists, right? A lot of us are emotional people, not all, but a lot of us are. And I could sense that. And honestly, it did make me kind of sad because I was sensing that from you and I really care about you guys as artists. I really, really want to see you um, paint a portrait you can be proud of because I know even though art is just one aspect of life, you know, this is who God created you to be. You would not be in this group if you didn't have that desire to paint. And so since you have that desire, it's something God put in you. It's a talent he put in you. And you want to be able to do it to the best of your ability. You want to be able to paint portraits maybe of your grandchildren or your family members. You might want to do commission portraits for a living. Uh, you might want to, you know, do artwork that encourages you and it's therapeutic. Maybe you want to get your artwork in a gallery. You want to share your gifts with the world and beautify the world you live in. Whatever your goals are, I want to help you with that. And so if you haven't painted an acrylic portrait before, many of you, this is your first time, um, you want to make that first portrait look good, right? You want it to really look like the person you're painting, look realistic. And so when you're falling short of that goal, it, there's a dissonance between that and it's a challenge. And, you know, I really I want to help you with that. And so I posted on Saturday um, just, you know, my thoughts. And we had a lot of people just commenting back on it. And I thought, let's do a live meeting. You know, I thought at first maybe I'd do two additional lessons uh, for the portrait painting challenge. But I've decided instead to do a, a kind of a bonus or extra video. I already put that out on Saturday. And then I'm doing this Facebook um, workshop with you. And I think that's going to be a better use of my time and it's going to be more beneficial for you. Because it takes a lot of work for me to, to you know, edit all those videos. And this way I'm going to be able to understand exactly what you need and show you here in this video. So, so that, that's what prompted that. And then was it, I think, um, a day later, I had this crazy idea. Hey, what if I print out one of the student's paintings or a couple, and then I paint on top of that. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm sure I could get, get a place to print it off quickly. So I found Walgreens. I used to have my photos developed there. And Walgreens actually would do it within just hours. So I, you know, posted that here in the group and several people offered their images uh, for me to select a couple to paint from. And then I went ahead and uploaded it to Walgreens, got them printed off. And this is, this is what we have here, just to show you. So this is uh, Diana Hancock's painting. And by the way, the fact that I selected Diana's and one other one is by no means saying that Diana's painting is of a lesser quality than anyone else's. So Diana, I want you to know that. It's, it just basically means that I saw some opportunities within your, your portrait to be able to demonstrate how to overcome challenges with blending and different things. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm just gonna look at the comments here. Somebody says, I'm cutting off here. Can you guys hear me okay? Is the internet fine? Della says it's cutting off. Okay, we wanna make sure that my internet connection is strong. So it'll be just a moment, I'm gonna move my router over. Can you guys hear me better now? Can you guys hear me better now? Okay, so I just moved my, my router over. So hopefully that'll hold out. All right, so anyway, um, so this is not, I was talking about Diana's portrait. And we see some opportunities where we can help Diana with the blending here and here. 
And then I have one other painting I'm going to show you as well. So guys, I just want to dive right in. And I'm going to start, I'm going to start by showing you how to overcome rough blending. So here basically we have a really harsh edge. And I think this is what Diana was struggling with and others of you are struggling with as well. And I'm going to pull up the reference image here. So this is the reference image. And you can see we have this really, really soft gradation there. And right now, you know, that Diana has not achieved that in her painting. And I'm sure she would love to. And I want to show you, Diana, and I want to show others how to overcome areas like this. Okay? So, I'm going to start... And you'll have to, excuse me, because I'm holding my, my iPhone and my brush, so I'm just going to be trading hands occasionally. But I'm going to start here with this flat edge brush. And again, before I begin, can you guys hear me okay? Is the connection good? If it's good, give me some thumbs up, give me some hearts, just let me know. Because I can move my router again if I need to. Okay, I see some likes. Fantastic. Great, thank you. Okay, wonderful. Looks like the connection is good. That's excellent. By the way, I have this also recording with my camcorder, so there is a backup. And I'm going to upload that um, to you. Video. That's my bro. That's my brother. Thanks, Pete. Appreciate it. Okay, let's get let's get cracking on this here. So <laughs> uh, we have this harsh edge, and I'm gonna soften this up. All right. So we're going to go down to my palette, and we're gonna get some matte medium on here. So just a big, big dollop of matte medium. And what we want to do is get a color that's halfway in between the highlight and the shadow. I'm just going to call it that just to make it simple. I mean, this could actually be called the midtone, and the highlight technically could reside right in the middle. But we want to get something right in between these two, okay? So let's do that. And I'm going to start with just a bit of romber dark because that's kind of the color that I'm recognizing. I'm going to take some titanium white. I'm going to mix it together. And the reason I'm using raw umber dark is because I detect that cooler color right here. It has to, the color that you use has to be very similar to what's already there. Okay, so you have to start with something that matches it very closely. And I just know from experience that raw umber dark is going to match. All right, so, so let's go ahead and take some raw umber dark and a little bit of burnt sienna because we want it just to get a bit warmer. And then a little bit of raw sienna. So the burnt sienna is going to add just a slightly redder tint, and the raw sienna is going to add a little bit of a, a more of a yellowish tint. But you have to keep in mind that these colors are less chromatically intense than what's over there. Just one moment, guys. I'm going to move my router and put it in a better place. I just detect that it's kind of slowing down. So just... This is just a little interlude. I'm not going anywhere. Stick around, guys. I don't have any fancy elevator music for you. So I'm just going to move my router in a better place where it picks up a little more of a signal. All right. Okay. So let's continue here. So we have this color right here. And what we want to do is just test it, all right? We're just going to put it on top and see how close we are. Now, you can see that it's a little too warm. 
So we're gonna wipe that off, all right? It's too warm and a little too dark. And let's add a little more titanium white. So we're gonna add a bit of titanium white to the mix. And then let's just kind of test that and see. All right, now that's getting us in the neighborhood. All right, so now let's uh, introduce a little matte medium. So far, I haven't added any matte medium. But let's just add a little bit just to make it a bit more translucent. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my white card. Let's just try this out see what we have. Now we just place it right here and we can blend out of that. And I might say, you know, that's a little too opaque. Let's wipe it off. Just take a rag that's a little dampened, wipe it off if you don't like it. Okay, we'll just kind of test it a little bit. Okay, let's uh, grab a little more matte medium here and thin this out some more. Just gonna make it a little more translucent. Now let's put this on the white card. Now see the difference between the first glaze and the second one? See how much more translucent this one is? We can see through it more, okay? Now let's go ahead and apply this right here. Okay, so now, <laughs> now that hardly made any difference. All right, so we have to get something that's kind of in between the two. So I'm gonna pull from this right side of the palette because I didn't mix the matte medium into the whole thing. And that's a super important takeaway is that you don't wanna mix into the whole pile here. You wanna mix into just a portion and have an area that's a little more opaque so you can pull from that. Now, this'll work just to lighten this up. And see how I'm just running the brush along the edge? Now, that is gonna get a little bit chalky for a bit. But that's okay, because we're gonna hit this with another layer. It's just one layer, and you have to be patient with this. Let that one layer dry. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna go on top of it with another layer. I'm just gonna kind of rub along the bottom edge just to make sure I have that shadow shape going in the right direction. All right, so let's, uh, let's do the same thing down here. See how we have this harsh edge here on the bottom of the chin and jawline and cheek? Let's soften that up with this same color. I always like to test the color. If I have it on my brush, let's see where else can I employ it within the painting. So I'm gonna brush right along the edge just soften that, that edge a little bit. Now again, this is semi-opaque, I understand that. But if you have harsh edges like this, you really will have to use a little bit of titanium white to overcome it. There's no other way. It's, it's all right. We can continue to use a glazing technique. We can continue to add more glazes. But if we have to do some semi-opaque layers and spots, it's still gonna look good. All right. Now, I want to see if there's any questions just to make sure on this first little bit I showed you if you guys are, if it's making sense, if I can help you understand it better. So I'm just going to scroll back and see if we have any questions here or comments. And I'm just going to ask you, do you guys have any questions on this? I'm seeing some good comments here. Suzanne says it's a lot of trial and error. What Matt shows is the real trial and try again to understand the translucency or opacity of a color or matte medium glaze blend. Exactly, Suzanne. There is a lot of trial and error with this. But hey, come on, this is, this is like real life, right? How many times when you were learning how to drive a car, did you get it right the first time? <laughs> No, I mean, really, it took you a while, right? It took you a while to learn how to drive a car. You made some mistakes. 
Hopefully you didn't crash into anybody. Whoever was teaching you probably had some moments there like, oh boy, I want to reach out and grab that wheel. But hey, you, you stuck with it. Through trial and error, you got better and better. It's the same thing with this. In the painting process, but that's how we get better. And you know, I've been painting for many years and I still don't get it right the first time. I'll put down a color and I'm like, nope, that's not quite right. Let's go back to the palette, try again. No big deal. Although I, I do understand that when you're first doing it, it is, it is more challenging. And I, I do understand that completely. And that's why I want to help you here. Okay, so any, any questions? Let's scroll and see. Diana says, I've already done the other glazes. Should I redo those after this? Um, yeah, so I don't know if you, did you already change these areas, Diana? If you did and it looks good and you like it, fantastic. But if you want to incorporate more of it, that's, that's okay too. Okay. Angela says, this gives me the inspiration to continue. Thank you. That's awesome. Hey, we're not done yet, guys. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to be showing you a lot more. I plan on doing this for the next half an hour, even past 11 o'clock. I'll probably stop at lunchtime <laughs> at noon. But I'm, I'm willing to do a two-hour session with you guys if that would help. All right? Just make sure my, my phone's... Just a moment. Okay. So Bobby says, I see you're waiting for the paint to dry. Is it okay to use a hair dryer to speed up the drying time? Absolutely. In fact, I have one right here. Um, I'm actually just stopping to get some questions at this point to field some questions because this is, that's already just about dry. Okay. So let's uh, work on some other areas, all right? Under the chin. Let's do another glaze there. We're just going to stick with this same color, but I'm going to grab just a bit of burnt sienna. See how I have that just kind of wiped off to the side? I'm going to pull it into the mixture so it's a little bit darker and a little more saturated with this slightly reddish orange tint. Okay, and this is what we have on the white card. You can see how that compares. Similar to what we had here, but just a little more vibrant has a little more chromatic intensity now let's go ahead and add this glaze right here we're going to soften this area by her chin now i'm going to use what i call a dabbing technique and just dab the end edge of that glaze just to soften up the application and see now how it's smooth there we don't have that really harsh line now and that's just done with using your finger and you can wipe your finger off on a damp rag if you don't like having paint on your finger but it works really super well and we're going to just continue to employ this glaze wherever we can because that's really the best way to do this and by the way value is much more important than color a lot of time artists really want to get those perfect skin tones but what's way more important than skin tones, the color, like how red it is, how yellow it is, the value is infinitely more important. So getting those transitions, putting your shadows in the right place, having them occupy the correct geographical space, so to speak, on your painting, and then getting the smooth transitions. Some areas need to have sharp transitions, some need to have smooth and you need to look at your reference photo to see what areas need to be sharp edged and what need to be softer edged. For example, her lip, that's a harsh edge there. Right up here by the nose, that's a soft edge. Soft edge here, soft edge here, but kind of harsh right there with just a little bit of softness, okay? So I'm gonna add this glaze right up on top of her forehead. And I'm brushing it across not vertically. Now you can do some vertical strokes, but if you want to blend it a little better, doing some brush strokes going across can really help. And that area started to set up just a little bit. 
we're going to just overlap. Now I'm using a vertical brush stroke because I can sense that the paint is going to flow better off of my brush that way. That takes a little bit of time, a little bit of experience to get that feel for what your brush is doing. That gives us a little more of a soft edge up there. Okay, now that's just the start. We're going to add many, many more transitions. I'm not going to do it here in this video, but if I were to continue this painting, and I, of course I'm going to show you in my own painting, we would add many, many more transitions to get that round form in the forehead. All right, so let's look back and see if we have any comments or questions here. Are, you, are we still getting good um, video feed here, guys? Give me a thumbs up. Give me some indication if you can hear me okay, if the video is okay. Just going to wait a moment to get some feedback from you guys. Okay, that's good. Fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate that. I see the like. So we can refer to yes, Absolutely. It's a perfect video. So it's possible, you know, excuse me, some of you might have some poor connections on your end. You just want to double check those. But it looks like. Okay, and there will be a recording. Now, I'm going to continue on here. Like I say, we're just basically scratching the surface, all right? I want to add a transitional glaze right here, and I want to blend out of that harsh edge and just soften that area up. But what we want to do is just warm up this glaze a little bit, and let's spray the palette. This is super, super important to spray your palette every 15 minutes. I have this wonderful sprayer called the Flarisol Sprayer. I got this as a gift from one, one of my students. It's fantastic. And uh, man, this thing's amazing. It just puts out the finest mist. You could probably buy it on Amazon. But yeah, just, just spray your palette. Keep everything nice and moist. And then what we want to do is take the same glaze and let's just add just a tiny, tiny bit of alizarin crimson. We'll push it off to the side. That's the secret. Wipe your brush on the rag if you need to. Okay, and then you can just pull from this little bit and introduce it into the glaze that you already have. Why mix a whole new glaze if you don't have to? We have the titanium white. We have the raw amber dark. We have the burnt sienna. We have the raw sienna right inside here. Let's stay with it. And now just change that color a little bit. Putting alizarin crimson in just to warm it up. And a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of pyrrole red orange. It's also called organic orange, but it is a red orange color as opposed to Indian yellow, which is kind of more of an orangish color. Anyway, this is one of my favorite colors to use. You could use cad red light, cadmium red light, but I'm just going to introduce this into the glaze, those two colors. Not into the whole thing. Let's test it out. And let's put it in here. Now, why am I choosing this color? Well, because when I look at my reference photo, hold on one second. This is the one I want. This is, uh, this is the one I want. Okay. Notice how this has a little more of a pinkish tone here in the reference photo, right on this area. That's her cheeks. we got to get that color in there. So that's why I added pyro red orange and alizarin crimson to the mix. Now I'm going to use this same flat edge brush, this small flat brush. And I'm just going to go over this whole area. Now why did I go over this whole area and not just a little sliver? Well, because in the reference photo, this whole area is in shadow. You see? This whole section of her face is way, way, way lighter. And then this area here is in shadow, so it makes sense then to fill in everything from the edge of her cheek all the way to the nose. And you see when we step back, then that adds a little more differentiation, a little more volume in her face, more shading, more depth, more three-dimensionality. All right, so... That's another thing we need to be cognizant of when we're painting. 
Andrea asks, do you work with several reference photos? Uh, just one, but I have one reference photo that's a little more of a yellowish color. And then I have one that's more of a pinkish color. And I want to make sure I had the one that had more of a pinkish color. I adjusted it in Photoshop because on my Kindle it just displayed as too, too yellow. So I made sure it had enough pink in it. Okay. So let's keep working here, all right? Let's soften up this edge right here, that harsh edge. Now that color has less pink in it. It has a little more of a yellowish tint, you see that? So here, and let's rinse off the brush. We don't want the paint to get in the ferrule and clog it up. Just swish it really, really good. And then I have a rag I just I just have this towel that I put down on my table and I just wipe off the brush on that towel rinse it another time wipe it off again and there we go now let's uh, let's go ahead and add a more yellowish tint here so I'm going to take some raw sienna Okay, because raw sienna is, I consider this as a yellow. I know it's not yellow, but I consider this as kind of a less chromatically intense, less um, saturated version of yellow. So this Indian yellow is more of a transparent or translucent pigment. It's super vibrant, super intense, but this is a yellow too. It's just less intense. It's more of an earth tone. Okay, so... If I look at the reference photo and I see it calls for it, the, the yellow that I'm detecting is not as vibrant, then I'll choose this instead of Indian yellow. But for highlights, areas where it's really, really bright, like sunlight shining and it's the lightest value in the face, then I'll use Indian yellow plus usually titanium white and maybe pyro red orange. Anyway, don't want to throw too much at you, but just want to share as much as I can, all right? So I'm gonna mix this raw sienna into that glaze, that glaze I've already mixed. And we're gonna bring it over here and just test it out, see what it looks like. That's too dark. I'm gonna wipe it away. I need to add some titanium white to lighten it up. All right, just wiped a little bit of that titanium white off here. I'm adding it right there lightening it up. Now I could have added matte medium, but I need enough titanium white in here to bridge the gap because it's got to be able to overcome this harsh, harsh edge. If I just use a really transparent translucent glaze, it's not gonna, it's not gonna get rid of this harsh edge. I need to have that titanium white, which makes it more opaque to overcome. Now, very carefully, I'm just gonna dab this in Test it like this. I'm gonna use my finger just to dab the edges. It got on the eyebrows, no big deal. Let's just dab that away, all right? Now you can see how it just softened up that edge really nicely. Now, we can continue to do this all over through the portrait. And it, since I have this color on my brush, I ask myself where else can I employ this in the painting? Well, I could put it right here and I could soften up this edge of the nose. I see that that was a little too sharp. It had too sharp of an angle. So I'm just rounding this out right there. Just rounding that out. Now, another thing that we want to do is really look at these edges. This is a mistake I see with, with portraits um, is that we have the hair too harshly defined against the skin tones on the face. Now I know this is in progress, but at this stage we would want to have some shadows being implied from the edge of this hair. This hair has thickness, it has depth, it has form, and so it's keeping some of the light from shining onto her face, and wherever it's not shining on her face, there needs to be a shadow. And if you look in the reference photo, we can see that little bit of a shadow right there. You see how it's a little darker along the edge? 
So what we want to do is add a glaze to this edge here. All right. So this we're going to be kind of pivoting away from doing kind of uh, highlight work and semi-opaque glazes to overcome harsh edges. And here we're going to be adding an additional shadow. What I'm going to do is take some burnt sienna and I'm going to introduce it right here. Just a little bit. A little bit more. And just a tiny bit of raw umber dark because I don't want it to get too reddish. And burnt sienna, we already have a little bit of a lizard crimson in here too, so. And pyro red orange. But I do know that yeah, we're going to need a little bit of titanium white, I think. I'm going to pull it just from this area I have over here, dabbed off to the side. And then a little more raw sienna. And raw umber dark. What I'm trying to do is to get the value just a bit darker as well. Now, I'll show you on the white card what it looks like. So it's a little darker, a little more intense than what we have in these other glazes and let's see what we have when we put this right here that's eh, probably a little too intense for this and that's because the photo printouts a little darker than what it would be in real life I'm gonna add a bit of titanium white and a little raw or dark and we're cooling this down this mixture down now I still have some of the original mix right there if I need it but now I've cooled this down. I'll show you what it looks like on the white card. Now you see how that's less intense. Okay, this was much orangier, much redder. Now this is a little cooler. Danette says, wow, I'm starting to understand how you pick the colors of the glazing mix. Awesome, I'm glad that helps. Now let's put this shadow in here underneath her hair. And we just want to apply that edge. I'm going to use my finger and just dab the edge a little bit. Now even if you weren't able to do that, you could still overcome any harsh edge. It just takes more work. And I'd like to save you some of that work. Really just about any painting can be fixed. The question is how much work do you want to put in? I don't think there's really a, any painting that you can't fix. But there comes a point where, you know, it just can take a ton of work and we want to save you that. But see, see how that shadow adds more depth there? Adds a little more form to her hair. And truly this shadow probably extends out a little farther than it should back in later on and refine that edge. Let's add this all the way down all the way down here and just dab the edge okay because on the reference photo you can see it around these sideburns as well and let's add the same glaze here on her neck because I can just sense that it might blend things out a bit now here's the thing when you put these semi-opaque glazes that have titanium white in them it's super important to not have that glaze go too far into your dark values because if you do that what happens is, is it gets chalky so you try to stop off that glaze just at the point where it gets really dark if you keep it kind of halfway in between the light area and the dark area you're good to go but if it continues into that dark value it's going to get really chalky really muddy in a hurry Linda says, I love seeing the mixing up close and personal. Great. Well, maybe we'll do more of these Facebook lives then if you guys find them helpful. Um, let's work in her hair, all right? Let's work in her hair. Uh, I'm going to add a glaze to her hair. And I do have another painting that I wanted to show as well. And I think at about 11 o'clock I'm going to switch into that, okay? But let's... Let's work on her hair. I want to do some transitions on these glazes as well. So if you guys are able to stick around till 11 o'clock, I know this is a super long workshop, but I'm, I'm hoping it'll be full of value for you and you'll come away with many, many tips on how to make your portraits better. 
So I'm going to add a glaze or two in her hair and soften up those edges. We look at the reference photo and we can see that there's a little bit of a reddish brown tint. You see the shadow here? And then see how it kind of transitions into a somewhat reddish tint. And then here it's a little more yellowish. We want to get that color implied. And right now in this painting, we have these glazes, but they have a super, super harsh edge. Okay. And I'm not picking on Diana at all. Diana, this, this painting really is well done and the structure is very sound. And one of the reasons I chose your painting, by the way, is because it has a really good sense of the anatomy of her face and the likeness. And that's a painting you, you want to stay with. You, you want to keep on working on it and make it better. Don't abandon it. It's a good portrait. Just want to help you make it even better. Okay. Um, but here the edges are really harsh and let's, let's soften those up. Let's get that transition, that really subtle transition where we have the darkest values and then it just starts to shift into the lighter highlights. Okay. So we're going to take, well, let's take this, ah, no, let's switch. Let's switch to a round brush. So we're going to take this guy right here and let's uh, take the same mix, but I'm going to add some burnt sienna to it. Um, and I'm going to add some raw umber dark. Normally I'd be holding my palette right in front of my painting. So I have to kind of look back and forth between my painting, or I should say not my painting, but Diana's painting and the palette. We're going to take some raw umber dark and we want to darken the value because it does have to really be close to this. It has to um, be close to this color, this value, and then just be a little warmer in tone to transition into that highlight there. If you guys have any questions here, let me know. As you think of the questions, I'll be scrolling back to get some of those questions. Okay, so raw umber dark, and we're gonna pull a little bit of a lizard and crimson. Yeah, let's do that, that'll be good. Just a little bit, that'll make it fun. And let's test this out on the white card. This is what we have, so you can see it's a little darker. Man, that's almost like a nice wood stain, isn't it? I mean, that would look beautiful on your hardwood floors. I, I love that kind of color anyway. <laughs> It's almost like a cherry walnut. Okay, so we're going to take that and we're going to add it on top. We see it's too dark. Let's wipe it off. Let's add some matte medium. Just scoop it up. Place it right on top here. I need to pull in a little bit of the opaque mixture, the semi-opaque mixture that I had over there to get a bit more opacity so it'll cover better. That'll help it to transition between these two edges. Yeah, that's still a little too, little too dark. All right, we're gonna just add a little more titanium white and raw sienna. I'm sorry, matte medium. Now the titanium white, now the titanium white. There we go. And let's do that. Okay, this'll work, this'll work because we have something where the values are similar, okay? And it's adding just that slightly warmer tint. And we can just flow that in, flow that in. We're gonna leave this area open to correspond with this highlight right there. We're gonna add a little bit of it right here. Now, We'll have to use some more colors in this, but this is just to kind of get started. Just soften up these edges a bit. And here we just put a little bit of that on top. And then let's add a bit of titanium white and raw sienna. A little bit of titanium white, raw sienna. More titanium white. It's a lot of testing, a lot of testing with this technique. 
and we can just add a bit of a highlight right there and just blend out of that and just change the shape a little bit because one of the things is you don't want to have too arbitrary of a shape you want your shapes on the hair to have a little more of an organic feel to them so we want to get some of those streaks and striations in there all right so that just gives you an idea how to blend out a bit soften the edges we can actually bring these little highlights into the hair and we can get a little more of an organic feel to it as you can see all right just stuff like that so you can see what's going on um all right guys i'm gonna stop for a moment and just see if we have any questions i want to make sure that making sense uh diane says this is so helpful with understanding color kathy says when it gets chalky couldn't you then do some glazes over that that don't have white um you can but it depends on what's happening in the painting so if you have harsh edges like this you have to use some titanium white in your mix to soften it up because the value just got too dark in that area and so you you have to have something to lighten it up to get it to what it should be in the reference photo having that lighter value that occurs on the lower right side of that area below her eye and so there's no other way to do it than to add some titanium white to lighten it up but if it got chalky in another area and the value is not too dark then yes you could use just regular glazes Okay, D says, how about getting rid of an orange skin? Yeah, so in that situation, you'd want to use, um, you'd want to use some, probably a lizard crimson with ultramarine blue, and it depends on your pencil. If the values are overall pretty light, you can shift away from that color using color. of a because if you glaze over the whole face and you have areas that have a very light area on them that are, are, are to a value of, and then you put a blue on top or even a violet you're going to see that violet showing through but the other way is to mix a semi-opaque skin tone that's very close to that and match it and then add just a little more color to it to transition it away so you would add a little more titanium white and yes we can stick around as long as you can fantastic okay. I thank you for your paintings. So thank you, Diana, for making this available. Elizabeth says, "Amazing learning, fantastic." Uh, okay, Suzanne, and Suzanne is one of my students in the All Access membership. So appreciate her her feedback. She says, "Add more matte medium and less titanium. Work in small test batches, like he's doing on the white card." Yep, absolutely. Uh, Debbie says this method of painting on top of an existing painting is really helpful. Thank you so much for this. Great. Uh, let's see. Gail. Gail says, can you help us see how to lighten the eyebrows? I made mine too dark too early. Absolutely, Gail. Let's do that right now. I think we can use this painting as an example. And then around 11 o'clock, I'm going to put up the second painting, and we'll do some work on that, okay? So, let's, let's do this here. I just want to make sure that my phone... But let's, let's work here. Can you help us to see how to lighten the eyebrows? All right, let's do this. Sorry about the technical difficulties, guys. Stick around here. What we're going to do is we're going to mix a little bit into this color that we've already had, taking the round brush, 
Okay, we're going to take this small round brush. And this is the mix that we have. All right, so it's kind of similar to some of these other ones. And I usually test out on it. So here we have some very dark eyebrows. We want to lighten them up on this side. I have to go a little more opaque. So let's take some titanium white, a little bit of raw sienna. Okay, and just a bit of pyrrole red orange so it doesn't get too yellowish. So that would be this color right there. Mix it together. There we go. That's what we have on the white card. You can see this original, this other color. That gives you a sense of the opacity. See that? Now, let's go over her eyebrows here. We want to paint on the right hand side, not the left, because in the reference photo you can see that the eyebrows are dark on the left hand side and that corresponds with the shadow being on the left side of the face and the highlights are on the right hand side because that's the way the light is aiming. So we're going to lighten this up. We're going to wipe away around it so that the color doesn't get too intense over the lighter areas. That's super important too because if we bring this glaze too far out it's going to get really orangey, really intense, but if you go just right over the eyebrows themselves, then it's going to look much better, you see? And then we want to now get a transitional color out of that. We're going to take raw umber dark, place it into this mixture here with a little burnt sienna. All right, so we have a transitional kind of color. Here's what it looks like on the white card. You can see the difference there. That's when we just put down this one. And then what we do is we bridge the gap between these two. Now let's get some directional strokes that kind of follow what you'd expect to see with eyebrows. And that gets a lighter transition. Now, thanks for the emojis. I appreciate that, guys. And then we're going to soften up this edge on the left-hand side. So we're going to pull from this lighter mixture right here. And we're going to just stop. Future layers. So then the next layer, we just go on top of this one and lighten it more and add more textural markings. And that's actually dry, believe it or not. <laughs> like I said, I have my wood stove going and it is just piping hot in here. So this is already dry. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do another layer. Let's take from this lighter mixture. Now you see on my palette, how I have a very dark mixture over here. And lower in tone, it has more raw umber dark, which is a cooler color. A little more warm and a little lighter with burnt sienna. A little lighter yet with a little more raw sienna and a little more yellow. Okay, so this is kind of, I can pull from this lighter mixture. This is what it looks like on a little. And we're going to place that right on top. And we're going to get some more, just some more shapes going on with the eyebrows. We're going to refine the shapes and get more of that chiseled edge. Just like that. So that looks a little more like what we see in the reference photo. And so you can do this anywhere, anywhere in your painting, you can use this technique. All right, so that's really about doing that. Okay, so 
let's uh, just take a few questions and comments here. I'm going to scroll down. Uh, Elizabeth says, amazing. Della Asa says, the changes you've made seem so easy now. Awesome. You guys can do this too. Uh, Pam says, do you ever use zinc white to lighten? No, I only use titanium white, but uh, I'm sure zinc could work as well. Diana says, area right here. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to switch back here to this round brush. And let's go ahead and pull from this lighter portion of the mixture. I think I'm going to switch back to the flat, actually. All right, and then let's go ahead and work into this and just soften that edge. Now we're just going to place it right up to basically. I'm going to flip, flip my brush around just to get a little more of the. I'm going to dab away, and there we go. We still have that little harsh edge there, but eventually, and I'll have it. One more layer will be able to overcome. So it, it can take two to three layers to overcome harsh edges like that. All right, so Elizabeth asks, will you go over the dark areas again with the white mixture? <laughs> Um, not sure. Oh, maybe you're referring to this. Yeah, I would. Absolutely. Okay. Trisha says, would using zinc white make a difference? Uh, I've heard zinc white is better, better for blending in terms of making color less uh, I haven't tried zinc, but uh, I think other people have mentioned it, so you, you can give it a go. Give it a try. Um, Debbie says, for some reason, I'm with the water lines of the eye. Any suggestions for getting this to look right? Um, if you're talking about, are you talking about the bottom edge and the tear duct? I'm not sure what you're referring to, but uh, yeah, it, it's just a matter of adding more layers to the top and using a small brush to transition out. Okay, Suzanne says, has different opacity compared to titanium. Okay, I just want to scroll through here. Shiloh, thanks so much for the session, Matt. Uh, please put this lesson in the school. Um, yep, I will do that. If I, Hopefully I can pull this off of Facebook, though. That would be the only thing. I'm not sure I'll be able to download it, but hopefully I can. If not, I have my uh, have my camcorder version that shows at least the the canvas. Okay, any questions, you guys? I, I want to switch to the other canvas here, so that'll be kind of our second segment. Which canvases for those of you who are around yet and we're gonna work on that one all right there's a lot more I could do to this but I only have so much time <laughs> so let's pull this canvas off let's put the other canvas on just give me one moment I'm not going set my iPhone down Just setting up the canvas now as we speak. All right. Are you guys ready for the next segment? As long as my phone holds out. My phone, if it dies, then that'll be the end of this. So this will stay for a while. Here's our next painting. This is uh, Monica Groves painting. Monica, thank you so much for making this available. Again, it's really a beautiful portrait. The anatomy is good. The likeness is good. The contrast between the hair and the face is very good. You had just mentioned you were having some frustration points. Dark, which I take it to mean this area right here in particular. 
because really the painting is super beautiful. Um, but I think it's just these areas here that you're having some struggles with. So I want to help you with that. Um, let's go to the palette. And we're going to take this flat edge brush. It's just a bit larger. It'll cover more area. I'm going to grab some titanium white. We have titanium white. We've got raw sienna primarily. And I think those two colors are going to be the main colors we're going to use for this mix. Taking some matte medium, scooping it in just to get a little more fluidity here. In fact, I better spray this palette again. There we go. It makes it easier to blend. So now let's go ahead and apply this on top, see what we have. Now, that's too light. That's too light, so that won't work. I'm gonna wipe that off. And we're gonna try again. We're gonna just pull a little bit of raw sienna into the mix, but that'll probably be a little too yellow. So I'm gonna pull from this that has a bit of alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, and raw umber dark into it. I'll show you on the white card what we've got. That's what it looks like. Let's give this a shot. All right, that's better. It's just a little too pink. I'll wipe that off. Let's just pull a tiny, tiny bit of Indian yellow because that'll change the color really quickly. I'm gonna wipe it off, off to the side so I can control the amount on my brush. Now I just go back in and kind of tap my bristles into it so I'm not getting too much in there. And I pull it back into this area over here, into the actual mix. And this is the difference. It's just got a little more yellow. Let's try that. And we're just going to go over on top of this and lighten it up. Just lighten this up. Just like that. And we'll add a little bit right there as well. And if we don't get it in the first layer, we'll put another layer on it. And then we'll get it with that one. So I'm just brushing kind of off to the side. See how I'm holding my brush very much at an angle? I'm wiping that away. Don't want it to get over the lips. I'm brushing up at an angle to follow the contours of the face. Holding that brush at an extreme angle that really allows you to blend it without digging in to your glaze. If your brush is more perpendicular to the canvas as you hold it, it's gonna dig little areas in and make it blotchy. But after you've got your glaze applied, you can hold it like this, okay? Where it's almost parallel to the canvas. See this angle here? Almost parallel to the canvas. And as you paint it like that, it's gonna be a mu much smoother application. Now, that's the first step is just to lighten that up. And then we hit it with another glaze and we'll dial in the color a little more accurately. So let's see what else we can do while we're waiting for that to dry. So Monica, I think you could use some little highlights here in the hair. It's very nice, but just a few little highlights would help. Let's go ahead and see what we have in the palette. We're gonna pull from this mixture here I need to add a little more titanium white just because I'm running out of paint. Take some raw sienna, burnt sienna, a little more raw sienna, mix it together. This is what we have on the white card. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a highlight to the top like this. And Monica, you had a question or a comment. I will get to that in just a moment. But I just want to show you how you can add a little bit of a highlight right here. 
and uh, I think it'll bring out more dimension in her hair just by adding these little highlights just like that and this is something you can do later on in your painting after you have enough glazes on it but you see how that glaze doesn't work here it's too light over here it has to go over these darker areas just like that and that just adds a little more dimension to the hair a little more depth so you let's see what your comment was um, the dark my eye on her right so you want to see that soften up this actually isn't bad at all uh, just needs a little bit of a transition we'll take this little half inch flat we'll mix something in between these two glazes so that was what I used for the hair this is what I used for the lighter part of the skin tone and then we'll just add a little little glaze right here see how that looks just get a bit of a transition kind of wipe away the edge now we're going to darken it with a bit of raw umber dark and we're going to place it right here work out of this mixture just test that that's a little too dark all right we'll try one that's a little lighter and there we go now we can transition out of these two and get a little more shading and a smooth gradation implied right there okay well guys I think I have my camera attached to my power cord but for some reason it's not charging up so I'm gonna need to close this video down but before I go I want to get some questions from you guys so have you found this helpful if you found it helpful give me a thumbs up let me know want to make sure that I've showed you some things that can help you finish your portrait successfully I appreciate that thank you so much I appreciate it uh, Connie says so helpful wish I had known this last week before I destroyed my other painting awesome Monica says yes And that says, thank you. Thank you. Behind me, Monica's painting is a little more refined. Now, Monica, beautiful painting. Diana, beautiful painting. I'll show you how you could overcome some of these areas. Uh, Paulette says, yes. Susie says, thank you, Matt. Very helpful. Awesome. Okay, do you guys have any, I really appreciate the love you guys, thank you so much. Do you have any questions, any quick questions before my phone dies here that I can answer for you? Just want to be of service to you. Any questions, go ahead and write them in right now and I'll get as many as I can. And we'll keep the conversation going because this video will be posted to Facebook and if you have any questions you can post them after the fact too. Uh, Dianus is very good demo. Thank you. Appreciate that. Susie says, I love the cheek blending. This would be most useful to me. Katja says, thank you so much. Diana says, I lost the last bit of my picture, but I'll catch up again. Okay. Uh, this has been extremely helpful. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely, Kat. I'm, I'm glad this helps. Karen says, thank you, Matt Filio. You bet. Originally says, Matt and one instructor position thank you thank you god bless you uh okay how can we lighten the lips lighten the lips okay so it would be a highlight right in the middle there but you would mix pyro orange into it instead and you place it just on the top uh, let's see. Donna says there is a question. Mr. Earlier, someone asked how to fix her neck on the dark spot if you get it chalky. You know, it would be kind of the same process. It would just be placing that glaze right on the highlights and the midtones and getting a transition between the two. Donna says, how do you know what colors to pick for sure? So there really are no color recipes 
with portrait painting, at least with the glazing technique. And I, I think if you're really painting portraits as a fine artist, you're not gonna have one recipe that's gonna work for any particular face. There's so many skin tones, so many lighting scenarios um, that it's gonna have to be different for each painting you do. But you wanna look at your palette, look for those warm tones, those cool tones, and ask yourself on your palette, what is the best color choice? You know, if, if the color is more of a vibrant red, you pick a more vibrant red on your palette. If it's more of a cool kind of red, then you pick more of a cool red on your palette. Um, and I, I hope that helps. And we can go more into detail later on at some other point with another video. Uh, Kevin says, how do you get her eyes to look at you? Most have them looking forward. So yeah, that's a matter of placing the, the iris in the right place and getting that sclera just wide enough, but not too wide. If you have too much of that white of the eye, too much of the sclera, she's gonna look like she's looking away. Lighten lips, that's a question that uh, Rosemary has. Debbie says, how do we get the white of the dress whiter? Um, that would be a matter of adding titanium white with a little bit of raw sienna just in the right places. And I'm gonna to continue to teach you. We have two more, two more lessons to go. So I'm gonna be showing you some of those things in the lessons as well. Uh, Richard says, I teach painting online. I appreciate seeing how someone else does it. Thank you. Appreciate that, Richard. Asa says, I'll be applying these for sure. Diane, very informative. Gail asks, are we going to be doing more on the dress in later videos? Yes, we will. Unfortunately, I can't show the entire process uh, with you know the remaining two lessons. It's going to be maybe 45 minutes per lesson, and I, it just it takes a lot longer to get a painting done. Um, that will be in the All Access membership in the bonus videos, but I'm going to show you as much as I possibly can within our remaining two lessons, and we will cover more of the dress. In fact, I did show a little bit of that in the video I uh, emailed to you on Saturday. Jeannie says, this was really helpful, Matt. Thank you so much for taking the time to show us how to, to correct values. Thank you, Jeannie. I appreciate that. Tana says, I see green, by the way, near her eye and nose, also near the temple. Do you? Yes. Yeah, there is a kind of a slightly greenish tone there. And we're going to... I'll show you how to work with that in the last two lessons. Uh, Kevin says, how do you get her eyes? Okay, saw that question already. Kevin says, someone mentioned earlier they had overworked the glaze and created a blotch. How do you fix that? Same kind of thing, what I showed here and with Diana's painting, you just want to paint over on top of the blotchiness by matching that color, like I demonstrated, and then shifting it just a little bit and transitioning out of the darker area into the lighter area. Okay. D says, my face is too orange. Can I fix it by using your methods today, please? Yeah, you can. You just need to make sure you add a little more pyro red orange or cadmium red light into the mix so that the color that you apply to fix it is just a little bit um, less red than what you currently have. Ellen says, will you offer a special on the All Access School like last year? Yeah, last year I did an upgrade. So when you signed up, you know, you were upgraded. I'm going to do something not quite like that, but there will be some special for you. So um, absolutely. Won't be a price discount, but there will be a special. Um... Donna says, what if you can't go into the all-access for the fact that can't afford it? So Donna, um, because of the kindness and generosity of Mary Dunphy here in this group, um, we actually are going to be doing some scholarships after I open up the all-access membership and make the offer for that. You can apply for that scholarship, and I'll be selecting uh, three people out of all the people that apply and giving giving a, a three-month membership to the All Access uh, membership. So you'll be able to possibly get in that way. So look for the email on the scholarship, the Mary Dunphy Scholarship. Susan says, I worked the matte medium before. It was dry. It's blotchy now. Yeah, so try these techniques, and hopefully that'll help. 
Liz Elizabeth says, I feel like a light bulb is turning on in my brain. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that, Elizabeth. Appreciate this so much, Matt. You bet. My pleasure. <clears throat> Rosemary says that it was amazing, especially helpful when we go too dark in the shadows. Thank you, Matt, for your generous time and talent. My pleasure. I'm glad this is clicking and making sense there. Godfrey says it's only 37 a month. People waste that much on trivial things. Yeah, boy, you can get uh, probably a couple of pizzas, you know, um, and spend that much in a month, you know, if you buy pizza. We just uh, bought pizza for me and some friends on Saturday. It was $45 right there. <laughs> Don't do that all the time, but yeah, 37 a month, a good, a good investment in yourself as an artist. Thank you, Godfrey. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, D, thank you. Ellen says, I'm signing up this year. Awesome. I'm going to be excited for you. It's going to be amazing. And the best part about the All Access membership is the community, the community of artists that encourage and support you. And they're doing the same kind of lessons. And, you know, we're in it together. The live meetings we have on Tuesdays, they're amazing. So love to have you there. Uh, Caroline says, you're the best. Thank you. All glory to God. I'm just thankful to be able to teach and glad to be able to help you guys. Um, okay. Any other questions here? Kevin says, are you feeling well? You look like you have a cold or hay fever. Kevin, I am just cooking in here. <laughs> it's like over 80 degrees in my studio. I started a fire in my wood stove and I should have realized that it was going to warm up. It was cold this morning. Now it's warming up outside and I got this heat kind of coming in here and I, <laughs> I can't really shut it off because it's piped in it's it's not like your normal furnace so it's just it's hot in here and I'm, I'm doing great kevin thanks buddy uh asa says you're one of the kindest amazing lesson awesome susan says thank you love this so much you've changed my life truly i needed this at this point in my life god brought you to me well thank you susan that's awesome praise god and i'm glad that he made these connections yeah i mean god Hooks us up with the right people at the right time. Paulette says, you're giving us your our can-do back. Yes, you guys can do this. Absolutely, you can do this. Just, I would encourage you to finish the portrait well, hang in there, and keep on applying the glazes. And there's always struggles in a portrait when you're working on it. And I have them too. Even with how many years I've been painting, I still have times where I struggle. But I just know that if I keep staying with it and I keep praying it's going to turn out well it doesn't always necessarily meet my every expectation sometimes it exceeds my expectation sometimes it's not quite as high as my expectation but God always helps me to, to finish it well somehow some way and I know he can do that for you um Kathy says what are the what does the class entail yeah I'm I'm not uh well, I'll ask, answer your question. I'm not offering the all-access membership right now like this isn't a webinar, but thank you. Thank you for asking. It's not really a class. It's a membership. It's a membership to all of the classes I've, I've ever recorded. Um, you know, there's some videos on YouTube I haven't put in there yet, but, but all of the, the main classes, you would have access to each and every one of them. It's like, I don't know how many hours, 50, 100 hours of video instruction covering all different aspects of portrait painting, and then you have the access to critiques, uh, both personal critiques, depending on the level of membership you would purchase, the group critiques that you would have on Tuesdays where we meet on Zoom and we get together and look at our artwork and encourage each other and show side by side how to make your portraits better. But I'll be talking more about that um, in the next week or two here. So uh, thanks for that question. Suzanne says, I'm upgrading my membership. Awesome. <laughs> That'll be great. Love to give you, uh, you know, more in-depth.